Come on. Okay, we okay. have. There. We're loading up. Good. We've got. Uh, Espaldo is here. Our technician, Enuma. And we have Danielle. Okay. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning. And we have Miguel is driving everybody up to where they're going to get the mules. Good morning, Miguel. Good morning. <laughs> and then we have the team of Jim from Dream Away, who's in charge, El <laughs> Management. 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 And we have Kevin, his loyal sidekick. <laughs> Good morning, Labor. Kevin. <laughs> Labour. <laughs> Labour. Okay. Okay, guys. Well, off you go. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. Okay. So once you ride in front, you're, right you're, in. you're management. Yeah. <laughs> go for it, Kevin. <laughs> Make as much of most of it as you can do. Uh, put up. Okay. Are you going, no. Oh no. No, no. I'm building a web page today. Okay. And they are off. The sunny moon is. Twenty minutes in the truck. Two hours walking a mule. It's be interesting to hear their story when they get back. they are back now. Uh, Danielle, who is the health worker who chooses these villages, and Oswedo, who is an indispensable solar technician uh, of work, so they can't be with us. But I do have Jim with us, and we do have Kevin with us. So they're going to be showing me the video that they've taken and explaining what's happening as we go through. So I'm looking forward to that. This first clip's quite interesting. Do a ho 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 again. <laughs> Santa Claus! Santa Claus! <laughs> well, that doesn't look too serious, Jim. What do they think to taking Santa Claus delivering solar technology instead of toys? They were pretty excited, but I had to explain to them it wasn't that time of the year that I had other issues I had to take care of before Christmas time came around. They were pretty excited about having Santa Claus in their village, for sure. And did that help you with that? Oh yes, they, well, Danielle speaks uh, Kachi, right. and all the children uh, were there and were asking him if Santa Claus was here. And uh, he asked me, and I said, oh yes, and then I did the ho, 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 and that convinced them. They were convinced. And Kevin, you said they've got a role for the Green Guy or Green Girl? Yeah, for some reason, he was named Santa Claus and I was the gringo. What I didn't understand is that apparently if they're bad, their parents threaten that the gringos will come and take them away. Oh my goodness, and now the gringo turns up. Yeah, so I had to kind of convince them. They were our, a lot more interested in Santa Claus and they but were they a little bit intimidated by me. But that only lasted about well, a Well, let's have a look and see what happens next. Well, just before we get to what happens next, I'd like to say just a little bit about Passage On, our organization. It's run by volunteers and local professionals, and the idea is that we re solar panels and batteries from the boats. Here in the Rio Dolce, we have a large boating community, and although these things sometimes are not strong enough to still be used on the boats, they are good enough for the villages and to provide for five LED lights and the facility to charge cell phone. And this is really important for homework, for teachers preparing lessons, for medical emergencies, town meetings, even fiestas. So that's the basis of our organization. And we'll move back into the video now so that you guys can explain a little bit more to me. Right, this is the uh, Google map, and as you see folks, as you're watching this, we're coming into Guatemala and getting closer and closer, and, oh my goodness, is that the actual village? 
And it's amazing to see the village pop out of what seemed like just a continuous forest. So on our trip up there, we had gone through both flatland, jungle, jungle mountain terrain, and then into a plain kind of where the village was. But it doesn't even look like a village. It looks like just dots. Was it quite sort of spread out? Well, apparently it was. The, I thought the central village had maybe 20 houses. It had the community village. It had a church. And there was, like I say, 20 houses in the population that showed up when we did the actual installation that seemed to match. But, uh, well, Danielle, I was talking to Danielle, that's our health worker today, and he says it's a population of about 200. And 30 to 35 children, does that sound about right? I think children are sure. sure. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Once the word got out, Santa was in town. They all, they all showed up. up. Right. right, and just one teacher. We only heard of one teacher. Yeah, Unfortunately, I there is. it was the teacher's day off, so we didn't Oh, so you didn't actually get to meet the teacher. Okay, well, let's move on a little bit. So the trip to the village, how was that, riding in? Exciting would be the word. <laughs> uh, like Kevin said, this, this area, we've had a lot of rain earlier, actually late last year. And uh, it had washed out this whole area, so the horses had to uh, navigate the riverbed. The actual path where I assume they used to go had been washed out. So the uh, horses so had to go through, through the dry, uh, well, dry, wet riverbed, depending right. on where we were at any given time. And the horses were just uh, fantastic. The, uh, the specific horse I was on just took off. And, I mean, and that just, worked better. Yes, he just picked his way, uh, very sure-footed. So had either of you ridden before, are you riders? I, I am not. I mean, I have ridden maybe as a kid right. when I was at camp or something, but right. this is the first time I've probably been on the horse in 30 years. Uh, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> so looking at this, did Daniel get a horse that's they, we all agreed that we'd let the horses have a break walking across this stuff. Oh, right. So, okay, so you'd actually got off at this point. And I'm not sure whether it was for the horse's sake or for our sake. Right. That, but. Okay. So, that's the that trip. That's gym mounting up. Oh, nice convenient stones. Yes. <laughs> they, uh, at the very Very long, made up. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm from Texas, so naturally I'm from Cowboy. Oh, right. That's the same horse. Oh, is this your horse? That's my horse who's refusing to come down into the ravine. He's seen you. Right. I am, <laughs> I am from Maryland, and clearly horses know the difference That's between a Texas and, and, and a person from a Maryland. So uh, now you're where? We are starting the ascent, and uh, most of it was made on this riverbed that you're seeing right. as we pass through the desert. Uh, and there was a combination of flowing water, dry river, mud. Uh, there were steepness that uh, I wouldn't have attempted by foot before. So just Good, Mark. Coping with, right? we're coming into crops and things. Right, we've now actually come through the um, jungle part of it. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of footage. I was too busy hanging on to the saddle. <laughs> and I was able to uh, film. So it wasn't until we broke out into the top, which as you can see, they have beautiful cold. Oh, it was gorgeous. Absolutely. Si, Santa. Santa y gringo. And Jim is coming down from... Uh, why are you coming from a different direction, Jim? Uh, well, actually, <laughs> that's at the beginning of the... Descent. Oh, right. Yes. Right. Yeah. So I think the next part is you coming into the village. Let's have a look at that. What you're seeing here is the classroom. Right. The classroom slash com communal building, which is where we were installing neon lights. And when we got there, there's a bell. When we came there, they rang that bell. 
and then the villagers all came out to Amina's and the little children were sitting with their heads up into the window looking at us. They said, not too sure about the uh, gringo. Santa was a big hit. The gringo, on the other hand, it took a while for them to uh, warm up. To get, to get used to you. I think next, um, let's see, do you remember? We've got um, some of the elements of the services. There's a central controller, which is what we're looking at right now. Right. And its purpose is to make sure that the battery does not get overcharged. Okay. So it's determining do I have enough energy coming into the solar panel to put into the F battery. And that green light indicates that there is. It's also the thing that fascinates the people. Because it's got the lights on it. They, and the lights change. It right. turns red when the battery is low, yellow when the battery is medium, and then it mm. goes green when the battery is fully charged. Right. And it went and from yellow to green while we were there, and they were thrilled. They were thrilled that it actually worked and did something. There's a red and black box. What's that? Well, the red and black box actually was a creation of um, some people down here on the Rio. On Cameron. Which uh, Jim and I have carried on. And there needs to be a place that consolidates all of the, where the battery comes in, the solar panel comes in, the charge controller comes in, the electricity goes out. And, and, and that's it. Okay. And what's some white dots in the middle? That's a circuit breaker in the middle of the control box that prevents a problem from coming if too much current is drawn by something hooked up to it. It pops and, don't, and does And then they can allow. just press the button to... To restart. restart it. Right. And I think I can see the battery there. That is a sealed lead acid battery, which should have 30 or 40 amp hours in it, which is a rating of the amount of time they can run the lights, which is a huge concern to them. They wanted to make sure that they could run the lights for more than an hour or so. Ah, and right. we explained to them that that is somewhat of a function of how many lights they turn on. Right. right. And how much sun they'd had the day before. Yeah. They seem to understand. The people were amazingly receptive. Right. They knew exactly what they wanted, they knew where they wanted things, and they were looking forward to having the thing installed. Right. And, and they were very curious as to the solar panel, how many watts it was. Which oh, was right. Right. So they'd ask some the, te the, uh, technical questions. Some, some technical yeah. questions. So I either told them that the panel was 75 watts, or I was 75 years old. We haven't decided <laughs> how that translation actually went, but I think that's the point we got across. Right. I think this is Danielle flipping on the light. Right. Oh, there, there it is. And there's the light. This is Jim. You want to run two? Identifying where they should go. Yes. So it's like a tin roof? Yes, it was a tin roof. And what's he doing here, Jim? Jim. Uh, we were preparing the solar panel to put on the board that they had prepared so we could mount it properly. We're drilling holes inside the solar panel to put the mounts on to put it on the shelf that they are cutting right now. Uh -huh. And as Kevin said, they were they knew pretty much where they wanted it and they had a, uh, uh, what, a board put in the ground, they chopped it with the shade, yeah, and they correct that hole, and they got the uh, board that they cut it to the right size for the solar panel, they put the solar panel on it, uh, so I'll go and get all the drilling and serving and so on and so forth, so that got all done, and now they're hauling the uh, whole mechanism to pull the shelf and the solar panel up to the hole in the ground that they cut on it. So all this is happening when we were there. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. In the community, it was amazing how well they all worked together. They knew what had to be done. They all fell in to work together. They had a, that uh, pole that they made for the solar panel was a burger tree, actually, that they chopped yes. up. And we said you needed to have it at an angle, and they just went right ahead with a machete and chopped the angle to be 20 degrees so it would match the latitude for the uh, sun. Now there's that's Waldo. Right, this is the bit that had you mesmerized. That ladder doesn't reach anything. No, nor ladders in these Guatemalan villages are not exactly the same as we understand from the United States. Um, there is no way that it would stand on its own. It's meant to lean up against a uh, building. 
it is two or two vertical pieces of wood and then horizontal slats going across. But it doesn't reach the roof. Well, it was a oh. swallow believe that he would not have any problem if uh, the villagers would hold the ladder for him. I can see them all right there. And the swallow ascended the ladder, and balanced the on the top, on the top front. The top. Somewhat like a ballerina, actually, and shooting for sure. Selfish. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and with the drill in one hand, wires in the other, he would screw the light fixture into the joist on the top of the earth. Wow, I'm so impressed. Actually, this young man has uh, been trained by the volunteers, by the boaters, various boaters, and is picking up a lot of um, service skills, and what we're hoping is that eventually he'll be able to go out with another local and be able to do these installations without help of us. And th this is all without a common language because none of us is what I would call fluent <laughs> in Spanish. And uh, Oswego certainly isn't fluent in English. So uh, it's a major feat how much he's, he's learned. For the hand well, signals, he's unbelievable. You point, you make a couple of gestures, he's very quick. And he's, he's, he's got it off. Yes. Right. That's going to be brilliant. And we can send it over to locals, that would be fantastic. And um, just to wind up on this a little bit, um, after Osvaldo had finished this and you wound the project up, I understand we had a feast. And yeah, the villagers were just yeah. incredibly generous. Um, they cleared the room out and they brought in a chicken uh, lunch for us, which was delicious. Just, just you guys or? No, the whole village. The whole village? The whole village. That was a piece. Oh, it was. It was. Yeah. It was quite an event. We had this chicken soup that was just outstanding. And then we had boiled vegetables to go along with it. And of course, we are in Guatemala, so we had tortillas. Of course, of course. <laughs> I understand from the people that Oswaldo works for that the thing he went on about was the chicken lunch. It was a with a chicken lunch. It was good. It was really good. Well, we felt, I mean, these people have so little. They share their lunch with us. It's I know. So touching. It's, yeah, and a really them. nice lunch as well. And yeah. They wanted to show us that they were. That appreciation. Good. And in fact, that brings me on to. Um, the meeting I had with Daniel today, he said to me, that uh, Daniel, to remind you all, is the health worker that sets these things up and liaises with the villages for us. He said, without any prompting from me, that he had heard from Herson. Herson is the health worker who is actually responsible for this village. And Herson said, the villagers had asked him to contact Daniel and say how thrilled they were with the installation. And one of the things they're thrilled about is they can see these lights from a distance. Their houses are spread out, they're not all together. So they can see these lights shining in the dark at night, which they couldn't, they didn't have that before. And the teacher is absolutely over the moon with the lights so that you can see to cook and prepare lessons. So they just are so pleased. And the other thing is they realise how important it's going to be for the village life, for education, for homework, for medical emergencies, and uh, also for when they want to get together and, as you guys said, um, discuss which crops they're sowing, where, that sort of thing, and for the old party, like Christmas when Santa comes. Oh, so, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, thank you both very much. You did a brilliant job. And I hope you all enjoy the video. Bye, folks. Bye. Well, I'd like to thank all you folks for watching. And I'd particularly like to thank Jim and Kevin for all their hard work and participation. It's very much appreciated, and I know it's appreciated by the villagers. So, we'd like to say goodbye to you all now. And I hope you know a little bit more about Placidon and Guatemala.